we have a clip from the show of when she goes to see a psychic. Let's take a look. It's kind of difficult because everybody knows your history. They tell me everything they've read in the papers. Oh, by the way, does this guy have cats? No. So I decided to disguise my voice and wrap myself up as if I was from the Middle East. And there I was in the presence of a foreteller. Do you guys have any questions about the process, about what I do, how it works? I don't have any questions, General. Perfect. No questions. All right, with that, I'm just gonna begin here. And I'm getting a nasty taste in my mouth. It's almost like I... Let me just put this off to the side. I'm actually gonna be real with this. Um, it's almost like you're the fate seeker, trying to find things and look for things where you're at right now. They're also making you feel like here as well. Where's like June significant at for you? June? Yeah. June, meaning when Michael passed on. Can you believe that? You covered your face, you were veiled up. Yeah. And you went to see the psychic I did. to find out information about Michael. I did. Why was that so important to you? I did. I went there because when I went to the house, Havenhurst, mm -hmm. the security guard had told me that they're hearing strange things. And he told me that the dog would bark yeah. at a certain time every night and look up at the window and just bark, 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 and bark for an extended period of time. Yeah. And I said, well, that was Michael's room. That's where he stayed. And the dog, of course, he knew nothing about that because Michael wasn't living there when the dog was there. But it, it was Michael's dog, Kenya, actually. Yeah. And so he would say, and then over there, I hear tap dancing. We hear tap dancing constantly. Someone tap dancing. We go upstairs. No one's up there. We come back down. We hear the tap dancing nonstop. And yeah. this was going on for many days. Yeah. And it goes on. And I said, well, Michael used to tap dance for two hours every Sunday over there, right there. And he goes, that's where it's coming from. And he didn't know any of those things. And so because of that, I just got really intrigued by it and said, he says, I think, uh, I don't know, he's kind of a little bit clairvoyant. Yeah. And he says he wants to send messages. So I said, I, if he's sending me messages and there's something to be heard and know, I want to know it. Yeah. Do you think that any of the other, your other brothers or sisters or your parents are getting messages from Michael too? I, you know what? I do know that certain people in the family are, but I'm not going to say who they are. Okay. But they are. Yes, absolutely. Will we find out in the show if anybody's getting any messages? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gonna make me watch this show for the whole season. <laughs> so, it's a great show. No, you it is a great it. show. I, I will know. watch it anyway. But I know. You told me you like it. Four years have passed since Michael, uh, yes. since Michael tragically left us. How have you dealt with that loss, though? It's been difficult. It, it's been difficult not only for me, but for all of us, of course. And, and I don't know if you've lost a loved one, but it's yeah. very difficult to deal with. And it's reality really sets in because you really realize for the first time you're helpless. There is absolutely nothing you can do to bring this individual back. And that's when reality sinks in yeah. and it sets in there and it's like, I'll never see this person again. You cannot bring this individual back. Yeah. But you know, time is, is, is a, it's, it's very interesting how time heals all. Yeah. And as time passes by, you begin to cope a little bit better each day and a little bit better each day. So time has been on my side a great deal of that, and not only just me, but for his kids as well. Yeah, one of the things that the psychic told you, I remember, was that you need to not let it go, but to kind of get a sense of closure. Yeah, a sense of closure and to move on, and Michael would want that. And I listened to that very well, because a part of me thought that he would want me to do that, but me being just wanting to really just understand and know what happened, and I've moved on. Do, do you have a sense that you know what happened? We don't know. We don't know. No one knows, actually. So, uh, but, you know, it's, it's um, time heals all, and uh, for me to move on, and I've, I've decided to uh, do that. I, he feels that's best, and so I decide to do it. You know, you never know what, if people really know the truth or not, but... I, I remember the psychic said uh, it was an accident, but it wasn't an accident. Yes, which is kind yes. of a Kind of strange, wasn't yeah. it? How did, you, how did you interpret that? I, you know, I, I tried not to. I tried not to read into it, but at the same time, I'm thinking, geez, because I'll get very analytical with everything. So it's like, yeah. okay, just he wants you to move on. <laughs> <laughs> so you just leave, you just yeah. leave it alone. He wants you to move on. <laughs>